Sci-Fi Diner Classic, episode 24. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Herzog. Hello, I'm Miles P. McLaughlin. And we are here tonight to bring you a classic interview. And when I say classic, this is about an interview that we did two years ago Mm -hmm. with none other than David Nickel. Right. Now, people might know David Nickel from what show? Uh, Stargate Atlantis. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you would know him best as um, Zelenka. Yes. The sidekick of Dr. Rodney McKay, who just got crapped upon in practically everything. So. I know. I, I he th- this guy had the patience of Job dealing with, um, um, with with McKay, but at the same time, occasionally you would hear him probably swear in um, in, in, in check, you know, right? right. <laughs> Which is absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I also love the fact that he later made an appearance in Fringe. That's true. He did. Yeah, yeah. So alternate universe. Uh, Crazy minister. <laughs> and this was really an interview we did with his movie, The Monster from Lake Okapogo, I believe it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're going to hear our, uh, our interview with David Nickel here, and uh, it was a good time. It did was. Over, did it over Skype. Skype was kind to us that night. The Skype mm-hmm. gods were great. And, uh, it was just good good times. Most want to go back and watch Target of Mass. I have, and it's... It's well worth it. Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah very good. All right, well, we hope you enjoy our interview with David Nickel. Atlantis, and you are listening to Sci Fi Diner Podcast. Thanks for being here. Ready? Take one. A serpent, possibly a plesiosaur of indeterminate size. Big. Think Loch Ness. It will be the greatest zoological find in the history of marine biology. Why the Ogopogo? Well, I, I grew up on Lake Okanagan, and the old beast has fascinated me ever since my first encounter. You've seen it? We're looking for the Ogopogo. Ogopogo? It's just like his father. Thankfully, not too much. I couldn't take it. We're going to find the beast of Bottomless Lake. We are on the cusp of a new era. <laughs> It's resting area. That's a lot of speculation, Dr. Moran. We cannot track the beast. Pogo Pogo is for sale. Get your Pogo before they go go. Ah, let's go fishing. Okay, you're going to place live electrical wires in the water. Electricity attracts the beast. Oh, no. I could rig up a charging mechanism that would attract Ogo Pogo to us. Isn't that dangerous? Not if you know what you're doing. Well, have you ever done this before? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Let's take off to the lake like we used to. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're fans of such shows as Human Target, Fringe, Sanctuary, Eureka, Psych, and Seven Days, uh, you'll be delighted to know we are speaking with uh, Mr. David Nichol, who has guest starred on such great shows and has been a regular playing uh, Dr. Zelenka on Stargate Atlantis. Uh, Mr. Nichol, welcome and thank you for taking time to talk with us on the Sci-Fi Diner podcast. Thank you very much, Miles, and congratulations for making it through the uh, that minefield of names. I know. Oh. I mean, I mean he, you know what? He could have added a ton of other science fiction shows that you've been kind of guest starred on. Is there? A, is, do you have affinity for science fiction shows? Well, you know, it's funny. I get asked that, but uh, it doesn't really happen that way. I, I mean, I have an affinity, of course, for uh, for science fiction shows, but uh, it, it's not me that does the choosing. It really is the people that are that are putting me in these things. So, uh, it also has a lot to do with uh, the Vancouver and how Vancouver has 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 become. Uh, I just saw an um, 
a story on it in the CBC, how Vancouver has become a hotbed for, uh, it has actually been a hotbed for a long time for of, of, of science fiction. So it's just kind of what's around and uh, what I go out for. So I, I guess, yeah, I guess it has become an affinity, but it's an affinity that I certainly am proud of and uh, really do enjoy. Yeah, well, we love seeing you in the science fiction shows that you certainly have been in. Uh, among some of our favorites, Fringe, I'm a huge Human Target fan. I forgot that you were in Human Target just for that one. Yeah, time. that was a fun, that was a fun one. That was, uh, we just did that one about, uh, oh, Oh, it's clocking about a year now, but right. uh, Mark Valley and uh, those guys were great to work with. Uh, uh, great concept for a show and a really uh, fun episode, that one. That's the one where we were in the airplane. Right, right. Yeah, that, so that's totally cool. Well, tell us a little bit about Beast from Bottomless Lake. You know, dun, dun. A, 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 lot, a lot of our uh, listeners will not have been familiar with this movie, and it's kind of making its rounds in the uh, international circuit and has won numerous awards, but tell us a little bit about it. Well, absolutely. The Beast of Bottomless Lake started as a labor of love with uh, uh, two friends of mine that uh, I've known for uh, several years, Craig March and, and Kennedy Goodkey. The Beast of Bottomless Lake basically follows the story of Paul Moran, who's a cryptozoologist, uh, uh, in his quest for finding the mythical Ogopogo. And the Ogopogo is, um, much like the Loch Ness in Scotland, a... Uh, a, a, a quasi-mythological figure that lives in Lake Okanagan in, in British Columbia's interior, just about four or 500 uh, kilometers away from here. So we uh, packed uh, our, uh, our script and all of our actors together, threw them into a, into a, a camper van and uh, went up to uh, Lake Okanagan and uh, began filming The Beast of Bombless Lake about uh, two years ago. It took a long time to, to put it through post and to get it all edited together into, uh, in, into the final product which has just debuted uh, a few days ago at uh, vcon here in vancouver at the uh, at the science fiction convention and uh, for all intents and purposes it's really uh turning into a quite uh quite a little indie darling we've uh, um already had it up at the um, Okanagan Film Festival in Kelowna, where we won the Audience uh, Appreciation Award or the Audience Favorite Award, and in Mississauga, where I think we uh, we also won Best Feature for the uh, at the Mississauga Film Festival. So, in its in its sort of baby steps towards getting out there, it's uh, it's already uh, uh, ticked a f- um, uh, had a few successes. No, oh, and that and that's awesome. Tell me, uh, and, you know, it's kind of. It reminds me of uh, a bit of a. It's a bit of a comedy, right? Mm. It's kind of the it's, way it it's, plays it's off. more than a bit of. A, it's more than a bit. No. <laughs> it's, it's quite a bit of a- uh, a comedy. Um, the the um, if, if you actually Google Beast of Bottomless Lake, what you'll you'll, you'll find um, is apart from uh, links to us, you'll also find uh, links to an episode of Scooby Doo from the seventies, also oh, called right. The Beast of Bottomless Lake, and uh, the parallels are not uh, not entirely um, un, uh, unbecoming. It, it's very <laughs> similar. It's a team of five people that, uh, under a very, um, uh, well, very driven, uh, almost Ahab-like, in uh, if uh, almost Ahab-like. Uh, uh, leadership of, uh, of of Paul Moran uh, go after this uh, this this beast this uh, this this so called Ogopogo and everything of course that can go wrong does go wrong and uh, so it sort of it's it's it follows their trials and tribulations in uh, in in finding this thing. Well, very cool. And now it's based on a real myth, right? Yeah, it is. It's 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 based on uh, and and. Many people still believe that there is an Ogopogo. Uh, lake Okanagan is a is a is a very deep lake and uh, goes from Kelowna all the way up to Vernon and down to Osoyoos in the uh, in in BC's uh, beautiful Okanagan country. Uh, and because it's a deep lake and has a very uh, uh, many different layers of uh, of sediment, they never have been really able to fully dredge or or, or actually uh, f- find the full depths of this of this lake. And there's many reports of uh, of of sort of like um, humped backed creatures that have been uh, sighted on the lake, and people sometimes think it's wakes from boats or or sturgeons or particular large types of fish. But there's been a myth around uh, the Okanagan around the Ogopogo for many many years now. Oh, very cool, very cool. Well, Miles, yeah. uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have a question here? I'm doing just fo- yeah. A follow is uh, is the movie available on DVD now? Because how. Uh, People interested can, can watch it. 
Yeah, unfortunately not. We've just sort of uh, put it through into some of the, got it into some of the um, film festivals here in uh, in uh, the Okanagan and in, in Mississauga. So we're just getting it uh, out there. The DVD is 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 on its way. I understand, but I think what we need to do is still get it out to a couple more festivals first. Right. Now, getting it out, getting it out to the festivals will that will that enable to hit? Obviously, it hits the critics and it hits the people that attend the festival. But does will that eventually work its way into the independent film circuit, or will it? Because uh, um, I mean, there are independent film companies or, or theaters around where our area, where we're at in the East Coast here. But uh, or will it make it into the mainstream theater? I mean, where's the goal? What's the hope? For Indeed, yeah. Well, the, the the goal and the hope is to get a distribution deal and and to get someone to be able to actually make the DVDs and to and and to put it out into a into a broader um, uh, public domain. Um, you know, of course, we we have the option to uh, uh, to do this on the internet also and to uh, and to and to self publish. But with with um, you, you know, a film of this size, it is a full sort of two hour long feature, and uh, uh, we we are looking to to get uh, a distribution so that it does go sort of over and beyond uh, what would just be sort of like an internet release or a, or, or a DVD release. So fingers crossed for that. We're trying to get it into some festivals where there are some distributors who might have an eye on on it. And it's it's a great little piece and it's a, it's a story, you know, that hasn't been told and it's a it's a corner of the world that hasn't really been uh, explored that much in, in, in film. So it's, uh, it's a tremendous little um, little opportunity, I think, for someone that, uh, that, uh, that, that could use a film like this. No, absolutely. Now you are at a. Are you going to have a? Are you going to a conference this next week that'll be uh, that you'll be talking about the film? Uh, we've actually, yeah, we just we just had it up at uh, at a at a convention here in Vancouver called VCon, which was just uh, the weekend past. And um, I would uh, I would uh, maybe direct you guys or to, to whoever is interested to the Facebook page for Beast of Bottomless Lake, and there's there's links to all the different um, uh, interviews that uh, we had done and uh, and more information about the uh, about the film there. Oh, very very cool. And you know, talking about c- conventions, do you make any convention appearances apart from the Beast of Bottomless Lake? Hmm, interesting. You should mention that. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, apart from the Beast of Bottomless Lake, which actually was my first convention appearance with uh, with this particular movie, I have been around to a few of these before in my capacity as Doctor Zelenka from uh, from Stargate Atlantis. So I've been uh, I've been doing that for uh, for a few years now as well. <laughs> uh, and what a, what an icon! I, I was a fan of Stargate Atlantis. Loved. Yo, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was, it was that a great show? What it a shame! Was. That it's I, I'm, I'm just I'm just I just can't believe you put up with Dr. Rodney McKay all that year. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was paid to. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. That helps. <laughs> It does help, but believe me, it doesn't take the sting away. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, what was it like working with what David Hewlett? No, I get. You know how many times I've been asked this question? <laughs> okay. Well, then, how was it? No, no, no. I don't. I don't know. Actually, I'd be very happy to answer it. It's. Uh, it, it's just sort of like I, I kind of know how uh, Laurel felt when he was being asked about Hardy all the time. Right. 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 Well, you know, you, you know, your role in there really as, in a sense, the smart doctor that gets beat on the whole time. You know? Yeah, kind of, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, I kind of felt bad for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know? um, I think that's maybe a reason why maybe the character has resonated with uh, uh, w- w- with so many people. I mean, who hasn't been put upon and unfairly put upon by uh, by you know a megalomaniac, blowhard, uh, egotistical uh, you know boss? <laughs> that, that pretty much describes him. <laughs> yeah, I guess in, in 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 not so not as many words. Yeah, so it's um. I, I mean, working with David has been has, has been was of course tremendous, lots of fun. He's uh, he's not like the, uh, the the character. He's a he's a great guy. He's a lot of fun. He's a fantastic actor. We had a lot of fun doing our um, uh, our, our scenes. So it was uh, it was just sort of serendipity that it came together. Uh, I mean, I was never really I wasn't in the pilot of the of, of the series. I, I came in in the second episode when uh, of the first season, and um, Brad Wright, who's the producer of the um, of, of of Atlantis was on set that day and sort of said, well, you know what? This is a kind of a character that we've been looking at for for a while, and because uh, Rodney has all the techno babble, and uh, you know, it's easier to sort of explain what's going on if it's a conversation rather than a monologue. So they they kind of brought me in to um, to sort of share the the, the, the workload in terms of 
describing it, and the the dynamic sort of evolved from there. So, so you kind of function as like McKay's confidant, sort of. Yeah, confidant, foil. Uh, yeah, all all of the uh, all of the above. It's basically someone to to to, to share the, uh, the 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 technical responsibilities of Atlantis. Right. Right. Now, I mean, you were also as a part of that in SG One then as well, right? Was uh, you know what? There was one crossover episode. Yeah, it was um, the uh, what was it? Uh, oh goodness, I'm. It was I'm, called. I'm, it was I'm, called uh, Pegasus. Pegasus That's Project. it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the Pegasus Project. Yeah, that was a crossover episode, and uh, just before SG One went off the air, I think just before its 100th, I think it was like the 98th or 97th uh, episode uh, was was Pegasus Project. Yep, and that was the only crossover I did with SG One. Now I know Rodney McKay uh, started out in SG One, right? He was a doctor there before he came over yeah. to. Uh, hey, give me a second. Give, give me a second here. Yep. I need a wonderful three-year-old son, but he just thinks he needs to get in on the interview. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't left them watch Stargate Atlantis because the Wraith are a bit scary. They are a bit scary, yeah, yeah. and there's lots of explosions oh, and stuff. Well, you know, talking about Stargate, we interviewed uh, Tori Higginson this past year. Oh, she's tremendous. I love Tori. And, uh, and Christopher, yeah. Christopher Heyerdahl. Okay, yeah, he's great too. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Absolute character. He's another uh, – now, now, you were talking about Vancouver. You live in Vancouver? Yes, sir. That's where I'm calling you from tonight. Okay. For some reason I thought, well, I guess, I guess, I guess that's on specific time, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we're at what six thirty now. The sun's yeah. going down right now. Yep, yeah. uh, it's, been, it's been down here for a while, but because we're in the <laughs> where, where are you guys out in uh, Nova Scotia? No, no, we're actually we're actually in uh, Pennsylvania. So in, Pennsylvania, yeah, oh, okay, US, yeah, so down there. So, Copy but uh, yeah, so where were we at? <laughs> Stargate, I guess, right? Stargate, that's where we were. At, yeah, Stargate, Stargate. Um, now, one of our one of our uh, listeners asked, and I don't I don't know where he got the information, but is it true that you needed to be coached on the Czech accent. That's funny. That's a funny. Uh, uh, well, no. Uh, the, the the information is such that I have mentioned before that. Well, I mean, I am Czech. I was born in Prague. Uh, I speak Czech at home here with my uh, with my family. But because I grew up on the West Coast, um, I, I don't have the accent native uh, to me. So um, the irony was when the when the part came up of an Eastern European scientist, it was originally supposed to be a Russian guy, actually. And at the audition, I said, "Well, you know, I'm." I am Czech. I speak the language. I, I have I have the heritage. I just don't have the accent. But I, I, I you know I could do the accent because I hear it around me all the time. And uh, that's when the character changed from being a Russian character. That was right in the spec script, right when it first came out uh, from being uh, I think it was Doctor Ruslan or whatever it was or Karpov. That's what it was to uh, Doctor Zelenka. They changed the name and they uh, they changed the nationality to, to Czech. So no, I don't I don't get coached on it, but it's a, it's an accent that I do have to do because I don't naturally have it in my. Uh, uh, you know, in my in my English, I just have to put on the Eastern European, as it were. <laughs> okay. Right, and I guess what? Uh, uh, well, I guess I guess that's what, Paul, Paul was doing the British accent. Carson Beck. Right? Paul was doing yeah. Paul, Carson's yeah. Uh, he's doing the Scottish accent. That's yeah. right, the Scottish accent. That. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, it, it reminded me talking about a show that reminds you a little bit of Trek. The international, uh, the international yeah. cast there has that same feel that. When you yeah. watch a Star Trek episode, not to compare it to Star Trek necessarily, but it does have that same feel. Yeah, yeah, and th- that was actually one of the things that really attracted me to the project when I, when I when I first heard about it is this uh, sort of team of international scientists and and it, it, it kind of the way it started out was a real. Uh, uh, s- sort of take on this the, the Star Trek um, ethos that, that you've just mentioned, you know, the, this uh, collection of humanity, this sort of representation, this sort of test tube of humanity out in the cosmos beyond where we've never, ever been before and unable to come back. I mean, that that is, is such a, a great starting point for, for any sci-fi show. And I think that's what sort of fans latched onto when it uh, first started out. No, uh, oh, Absolutely. Miles, did you have any comment? Yeah, um, I, I still have to catch up on SG One and, and Atlantis, but I did start watching uh, Stargate Universe. Any chance mm-hmm. we could see you uh, make an appearance on? on- <laughs> I just I just talked to uh, <laughs> Joe Malazzi uh, a couple weeks back, saying, "So, what about Zelenka and the right. Destiny? <laughs> yeah, what's gonna?" And uh, I, I mean, of course, he he said, you know, because of the conceit of the show, and they're billions of light years away, and uh, and in a different reality. And plus, also, let's not forget, uh, there is a script that has been written has been written for the uh, much anticipated 
anticipated Stargate movie, uh, in which I understand that uh, I, I do participate. Zelenka is is in it. So depending on if that ever gets made and what happens, because quite frankly, I haven't read, or I don't think Dave Hewlett or any of us have read the the, the script for the for the movie. So there's some goings on there. I think that might, must relate to, or might relate to what is happening on Universe. Yeah, I know that they. Uh, I know IMDb has a Stargate Extinction, but that's been up there forever. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, exactly. I think it- <laughs> uh, we were talking with what Miles. We talked with Picardo over a year ago, and he just said, "Oh yeah, that project. It'll happen yeah. someday. It'll happen someday." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just always up there as 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 in production. So it's the longest running Stargate production ever. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. It says it's out for 2011. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll 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 see what happens. Yeah, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> oh, please do. Well, so tell us what's in the future for for you. Uh, okay. I, mean, well, I, mean, I mean, I mean, you're promoting this movie. That's probably the big thing right now. The Beast of Bottoms Lake. Try to get the word out of that. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. Getting the word out on uh, on the Beast of Bottomless Lake. Uh, I just finished a uh, an episode on a television show called Fringe uh, on the third uh, third year uh, third um, season in the seventh episode. Oh, we have that to look forward to. We love Fringe. Yeah, Fringe is pretty fun. Fringe is pretty fun. I like. I love the show, and it was really great to meet Anna Torv and uh, and and John and and all all the people on the on the show. It was it was a great experience. And uh, and you play great. Did you play a minister in that one? Is that right? How did you? What are you looking at? Yes, I am. <laughs> IMDb, man. It's a, it's a godsend. <laughs> oh, it's already there, is it? They, oh, okay. they, they, yeah. they mentioned it. I think it says that you're mentioning it, that, that you're doing yes. it. Doesn't it say that? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Somewhere I read that, but. But yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what their what their policy is on spoilers. So I I, I don't know uh, if I can even say that I'm a minister. But yes, if you if you have that information, then that's exactly who I played. Okay, they, uh, Reverend Mar- Re- Reverend Marcus. Reverend Marcus. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, Very cool. so great fun. Uh, it was uh, yet another show that's shooting up here in Vancouver. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, another sci-fi show. I think it started out in, uh, in in New York, and then they brought it out uh, out here to to, uh, to Vancouver. But a tremendous cast, uh, really fun, and it was boy, boy, it was was it ever nice to to to, to get back uh, into sci-fi world again? I really enjoyed that. Yeah, well, very, very good. Well, we got to soon wrap it up here. But before we go, where can people find out more information about the Beast of Bottomless Lake? Thank you very much. Uh, Beast of Bondless Lake is uh, online at Provost Pictures, P R O V O S T Pictures dot com. Uh, we're on Facebook also uh, at the Beast of Bottomless Lake, and uh, if you go to my website, David Nickel, D A V I D N Y K L dot com, uh, I'm sure there's links to uh, to all of these projects there as well. Oh, very good. And do you have a Twitter? I don't have the Twitter. No, I do have. <laughs> I don't have the Twitter yet. Okay, I have Facebook. Facebook, but Facebook, yeah. Yes, very good. All right. Hey, thank you so much for chatting with us tonight. My yes. pleasure, Scott. Thanks, Miles. Uh, and, thanks uh, for a great Yeah, and good luck with the movie. And uh, we, we'll be looking for it coming down the pike. And if we don't get it here in our area, at least a DVD. What do you think? They put nine chevrons on that thing for decoration? No, I'm saying. If it had a function, there would be information to that effect in the ancient database. You always say that. Yes, well, because we've hardly begun to scratch the surface of the ancient database. But that's not what I'm saying this well, time. Spit it out. I've only got so much time I can devote to these exchanges. Then what if the ninth chevron, instead of sending someone tens or even thousands of light years away, can send someone millions, like, across the universe. Okay, you know, when you say stupid things like that, it makes it very difficult for me to respect you. Okay, fine. Enjoy our mission. Thank you, Radek. I'm pretty sure he's being sarcastic. Thank you, Ronan. 